Welcome to Crypto Rosetta. My name is Savage and we're going to be discussing what's going on with BTC. Okay, so let's get into the price action and see what we can see. I just want to discuss this. You know, this is basically a previous count we were looking at and we're looking for that potential of extension here where this would be a 1, 2, 1, 2 and we were looking for additional setups. The fact that we've actually come down and taken this low, this low, and we haven't taken this low yet, but um, it makes that count fall apart because we were looking for that potential to find support here and then basically rally to the upside. So the price action has failed to actually achieve that. So now we have to talk about what this can be instead. So I'm actually going to go and just remove this now because that is not my interpretation anymore. What I would be looking for here is a couple of things. So either what we can say is we, we could have had a five-way move completed, in which case you know, what we need to be careful of is that effectively we're looking for this as an A wave, this is a B wave, and then potentially looking for, you know, a C or wave three. We have completed a move here potentially. So if we do start to break down deeper and we actually come down and we take this low point of this zone, this uh, 19549, potentially this could actually mean that confirm this as a bigger corrective move to the upside. The only way that we would not be able to, or that would not confirm it, is if we actually find support higher up. And I'm just going to throw this support zone on here. Um, basically, that support zone would be here between this 22,217 to this 18,430. So this would be looking at this move here in its entirety, basically as a bigger A or wave one. And then we'd be looking for that potential to retrace down into some of these lower levels. This 0 0.786, which would be this 18,430. We wouldn't really want to lose that because, you know, once we start to hit break down below this zone, it becomes more likely we are going to see continuation to the downside. And we could actually see a deeper move down towards this uh, 13,397 to this 10,604 area. So this is what we need to just keep in mind as we are looking at the charts here. You know, if we do start to break down in a more impulsive way, this could be potentially what is playing out. The alternative to this would be that we are looking at this either as a completed move, like I said, but this is not going to lose this low. As long as we don't lose this low, we do have potential to actually rally one more time. So we can either potentially count this one, two, and then look for a third or ABC to the upside. It wouldn't really make sense as a, as a three wave move. So if we do find support, what I would be looking for is confirmation of a bigger move to the upside. And what we'd want to see is basically a move up here past this zone. I'm going to just go on to this 0 0.618 um, because that's quite an interesting little level there. We'd be looking for a move up past this 48,887. 48, for confirmation of the third wave. So that would be off that 0 0.618 down here. If we didn't come down as low as that and potentially only came down towards this 24,631 area, that would be higher up towards this 50K mark. So that's that's what we're looking for in the bullish sense here. If we're looking for continuation to the upside, but we need to be careful. Um, the alternative way we can also count this, which is looking at this move is actually completing over here where this becomes a one. And we're looking for two and this is just a bigger corrective flat um, at the top end of this move and it's not actually uh, you know a five wave move completed into here so this is still a valid interpretation and if we do get a move down here in a five wave sequence so what we'd want to see is basically a move where this is one two three four and five coming down into some of these lower areas finding support and then a move that actually takes us up again past this high that would be the first indication that we could potentially be looking for, you know, a bigger five wave structure here. So once again, we would have to move up quite substantially and that would be looking actually to take us up towards the zone of this 47 K for confirmation of a bigger third wave. So there is a lot that needs to happen for us to get there. So we're going to be monitoring this, but basically within this structure, we're still looking for those same potentials here. You know, I talked about this 2.618 down here, this 25747. This is still a viable option. Um, you know, we've come through this higher range here, this 28381 to this 27627. So we've actually broken through this range already. Another zone of interest is you know, over here, this 26061 to this 25355 area. So this is another zone we could look to potentially find support if this is a flat. We'll go over the internals of this 
in a second. But I do think that we are, are going to see some continuation down. The, the question is whether this is an ending wave here. So if this is A, B, C, this would be an ending wave. Or whether this move to the downside becomes the beginning of the correction. So we're going to have to watch that retracement. If we only get corrective waves to the upside, we could actually look to continue down in some kind of structure like this, potentially as a zigzag at this point. We'd obviously have to be careful that if we do have five wave structure down, we need to monitor that next move to the downside and make sure it doesn't go past that uh, 1.618. So I do have this lower support box range here, which would be this 24.628 to this 21.191. So this would be sort of the lowest range we'd be looking for if we're looking for this as a as a, either as a one and a two, or basically, yeah, sorry, this would be one and two. We wouldn't want to come down and lose this lower range here, but really as a flat, we'd be typically looking to target out these this higher area here, this 382 to this uh, 50%. Sometimes these can fall short though. So I'm actually going to just throw the 236 on here as well. So that would actually be up here at this 26K. So if this is a flat correction up here, this could actually give us a bit of confluence here as a zone. We might see a reaction if we come only down to this 236. Um, so yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. This is uh, one of the potentials. Okay, so now actually getting into the subwaves of this move to the downside. We were talking about two ways that we were looking at it. We we're looking at the potential that we're having a actually expanding diagonal here, but I think we've come down too deep now. Um, I was looking for that potential of having a reversal here to the upside for wave two. Technically speaking, it is still possible because it could, with this move is just potentially extending out here. Um, so it is still possible. We could see something like this, but the proportions are getting quite big now and it's sort of lost that structure or lost that shape that I was hoping to keep if it was gonna be this. Let's see, these are also you know, quite rare, so we need to just bear that in mind. It is possible, but we'll have to just see how the waves actually progress. What this would mean though, is basically we have a bigger structure here we'd have a three wave move back to the upside, another five wave move down, three wave move up, and another five wave move down. This would actually potentially look to take us down towards this lower range here, you know, of this um, channel line again. So this would, uh, this would be a bigger sort of move to the downside. The other way we were talking about it is that potentially within here, we have something like this, where we have a one, two, and another one, two here. So there's a couple of ways we, we can look at this structure. So I was initially looking at it at the fact that I'm going to come here into the one hour. I was looking at this initially in the sense that, you know, potentially we were looking to complete our fifth wave here, our fourth wave here, and then looking for that fifth wave to the downside. So let me turn those internals on that we were talking about. So we were looking at something like this, where we were looking for basically a fourth and a fifth. So we've come down into that zone technically, but the problem I have with this count is, this structure here doesn't really compare well with this one here. It is possible because of, you know, the fact we've come down as we have that we've just had a shorter fourth and then we could look for a fifth wave to complete. In which case, you know, we, we're pretty much in the zone there. There is still potential to come down one more time here where this would actually then become one, two, three here. We're forming a fourth wave and then we look to break to the downside. So we're going to go over that in a second, but it is also possible that we could have completed in here with some kind of a diagonal because we can see it's quite choppy in this area here. This could also just be an ABC and then we break down one more time. If that's the case, you know, potentially what we could see is a drop lower down here. And I'm just going to go off this high because that is the, towards this 27,062 to this 26,955. So this could be a viable option where we actually are looking for this blue wave count to complete in which case we'd still be looking for that potential of this uh, this bigger yellow wave count. The thing is though, with the fact that we've come down so deep, it wouldn't make sense to me to actually, for this move to actually come back up towards some of these higher ranges here. I actually need to adjust this slightly. The, um, the 382 would be sort of viable because this would actually come back into this previous fourth wave. So if we see something like this as a as a zigzag, potentially, we could actually look for a retest of this zone of this 28,370 and then look for, you know, continuation to the downside. If we do get that move and we are completed here, I'm just going to go over this. Basically, we could see 
you know, a move that looks to end around this 26,869 to this 26,416. So some interesting things about this is if we do push down to this area, this could then make this a 4.618 of this as a wave one and a two at the top end here. Or alternatively, if we want to look here, we also have this 3.618 here, this 26,143 which was which would also be an area I'm just keeping an eye on if we do look to break down here. So these are off of these two different respective waves. I suppose I can change this color to make it a bit clearer. So this would be the yellow one and this would be the blue one. So I'm just keeping an eye out. We've actually come down to this 2.618. So that's why I'm looking for the evidence that we could actually have completed here. And we're looking to form a fourth wave for this um for this yellow sequence that we have over here. What we have to be careful of is if we have further extension here to the downside, this could mean that we're actually still within the blue wave count. So that would look something like this. And we're going to just actually turn on, turn off this. What this could mean is that we actually not completed this blue third wave here. And this could then mean that we have, you know, a little bit more downside here to come before we actually complete this third wave, which potentially could bring us towards that zone that we talked about, 20,000, 27,000 to this 26,954. So if we do actually have this playing out rather, potentially what this means is that we still have a fourth and a fifth and then another fourth and a fifth. What we'd be looking for is a three-wave move to the upside that faces rejection off of this zone of this 27,889 to this 28,766. If this is the case, so like I said, you know, potentially we do still have one more drop here where we could look to push down. And this could then look for a three wave move at that point. What I'd be looking out for is, you know, potentially coming back into this area here of this 28,334 and testing potentially the swing high here of this fourth. Uh, if we do push up higher, 28,766 would be the cutoff limit really that I'm looking for as a fourth wave. I wouldn't want to see this get much higher than that. If we do, then it becomes more likely that, you know, within this move it has completed. At the moment, we only have a three wave structure. Even though we've come down quite strong, all we have is, you know, three waves. We don't have anything that really matches up with the internals of this as a five wave sequence. We want to see something more like this playing out. So this is basically saying that, you know, we've got a little bit more for this third wave. We're going to see a push up for a fourth, and then we're going to see a continuation down for this fifth, and then we're going to get another fourth and a fifth. Obviously, some of these zones, um, because of how deep we've come here, if this is a fourth wave, it might not make it up to that, um, up to the wards this zone of this 20, uh, up towards the higher areas here, this 28766, but uh, it is still viable that we could retest some of these lower targets. If this is the case, this could mean that we look to actually complete towards this uh, 26,360 to this 25,907. The problem we have when we have moves down like this, we need to be careful that we don't have even further extension. So this could be, this is something I'm also just keeping an eye out on, is if we do continue to break down, it's possible that this third wave is still extending even deeper. And this would then potentially mean that within this structure, we've had a one, two, and actually we're still within the third wave. So this is the danger that we have here. You know, we want to see some of these key levels getting taken out. If we move back above this zone of this 27,815, that would invalidate the potential of having further extension here in this third wave. But really what we want to do is take these highs. We want to take this high here of this 28,308 and this um this high over here of this 29,088 uh, area. Once we take these two key highs, that invalidates that potential of this being a 1-2, a 1-2, and then actually we're breaking down much deeper. So the difference with this is this would actually mean that we're going to see potentially a bigger move to the downside here towards this 25,455 to this 25,859. And that would all be within this third wave where this becomes one, two. This would all become three, four, and five. And then we'd still have additional structure here that we'd have to account for. So this would actually look to actually break down past this 25,200 um, level, which would be these previous, 
these previous highs here that we discussed um, a few times when we're talking about this flat correction. So if we do get a bigger move down like this, this could actually mean that we break down much deeper. So we'd have to just be a little bit cautious of that fact and that we don't see um, something like this happening. What I would be looking for for confirmation that we are extending here would actually be moving down past 26,500. So if we have a direct sell off here where we actually move straight down towards this 26.5, what I'd then be looking for is potentially having a fourth wave back up towards this 27.179, and then having an additional leg down. If we do move down towards this 26,111 area, this would imply that we have, you know, extension further here as well, where this has become one, two. This would all be three, four, five. We'd get another fourth and a fifth. And then even from that point, we'd still have additional fourth waves to come. So this is the danger if we, um, you know, continue to follow these, uh, this count is we could actually see further extension. But, you know, these counts are just a roadmap. We need to see whether the price action follows that roadmap for more clarity as to which one it is taking. Okay, so I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please smash the like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, turn on those bell notifications so you never miss a video, and leave us some feedback down below. Also in the description, you will find a link to the Discord. Come check it out. It is free to join. As well as that, you will find affiliate links for both PrimeXBT and Bybit down there. Both great exchanges we use on a regular basis. If you don't have an account, using the affiliate link does help support the channel and we do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.